serve. Come. In public affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game and we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have Tom Bevan and basically that's what Tom Be Bevan does now. In fact for the last 12 years. You started Real Clear Politics in 2000? That's right. You've been doing it 12 years. We're going to skip the, you know, all the amenities about what a great guy Tom is because he really is. But Tom, I mean the real question, we've talked about this before, is Mitt Romney conservative enough for the Republican Party is it good enough for 2012? It should be a Republican year. He come in there. He'll be conservative. He'll keep spending down. He'll keep taxes down. He won't. He'll do what he can for the pro-life folks. He'll knock down same-sex marriage. I mean, is that? And, and he'll follow the Constitution, of course. And he'll be strict constructionist. And won't he won't come up with things like contraceptives for everybody, free for everybody, and it doesn't hurt the Catholic Church <laughs> because somebody else is paying. Is that too cynical? But okay, short question for you. Is Mitt Romney conservative enough to do what he needs to do to, um, to help the Republican Party win the presidential race in 2012? And will he stay on the reservation so the Republicans, the conservatives don't have to worry they made the mistake and elected the wrong guy? You know, it's interesting. That's one of the arguments that's out there is, is Conservatives should sort of make their peace with Romney, and and they should be okay doing that because then he'll owe them, and and because he's flip flopped in the past and he doesn't seem right. to have any core convictions, that if they give him the nomination, then somehow he's going to be beholden to them, and uh, that that's that's a reason that they should sort of settle and go for Mitt Romney. I don't know if he is conservative enough, and and. We're going to find out over the course of, of the next few weeks this nomination process. But clearly, I think uh, the Republican base has uh, major issues with him. I mean, they're still, they, first of all, they tried on every single conservative anti-Romney candidate they could before settling down to a couple. I mean, first it was Newt Gingrich, then Gingrich fell away, Santorum rose. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I, Romney's problem is he doesn't, he doesn't, he, he, I think if you want to boil it down to one single problem, which sort of encapsulates all the other problems, he's not authentic. He's not real to a lot of voters. He's been running for president for six years, and, and Republicans don't feel like they know who he is as a person. They don't feel like they know, you know from a policy. They don't know his ideological core. And, and uh, that is a problem, and that's yes. something that they, they are struggling to come to terms with. And that's the conventional wisdom, not to minimize or denigrate what you just said. That's the conventional wisdom. But Tom, you're somebody who's been watching this guy closely probably for six years. Yeah. You follow this stuff as much or more as than anybody I know. I mean, you get up a, some god, ungodly hour, like 3 o'clock in the morning, so you can make sure you, your staff of Munchkins, 50, are calling the right articles, <laughs> right. are getting it right. Seriously, your life is spent on this. So if anybody would know, is Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney a real conservative? Is he authentic enough for people to rely on? Tom, you would be the guy to know that, right? But I'm not just flattering you. And so the question is not what other people are saying. Okay. The question is, what does Tom Bevan say? Is Mitt Romney authentic enough for the conservative Republicans to rely on him to, one, get elected, two, connect so he can get elected, and three, do and say the right things when he's president of the United States? Well, uh, it, it, right being the right stuff by the conservatives. And that's the right. Party. And, and I don't know that any better than, than anyone else who watches this. I mean, look, Romney is, uh, he, he's a candidate that could he, uh, could he go and win the general election? Sure, it's possible. I mean, you, you could no, also make. possible. Look, would it, make the case for Mitt Romney. Say somebody said, do not as I've just said, but make the case. Why do you think Mitt Romney is a good guy to win the election in 2012? <laughs> I think one of one of Romney's his strengths are he's most likely uh, you know he's a, he's a decent guy and he's not gonna there's there aren't gonna be any scandals that are necessarily gonna pop up. No skeletons. Up. You can no skeletons. No, he's he's been fully one, one he's wife, been fully vetted. Kids, absolutely, exactly. No, no, has not been messing around as they say. That's right. Uh, I think his look. Uh, he does have a record of achievement on, on in certain things. Um, you know, turning reorganized the Olympics. 
It Olympics, was going in the wrong way, Olympics, the Winter Olympics. Right. So he made it come out okay. I think he hasn't done a very good job of, of making the case uh, for what he did at Bain Capital. I think his, his you record. You think he hasn't? Hasn't, no. But he could. Well, you could I mean, probably look, make a better job. I than probably he's could, made. as a lot of people could actually. Okay. Um, so that's a problem for him. Uh, so I don't know that. I mean, if I was to sit down and try and make the case for Mitt Romney, um, it would be, it w wouldn't be the strongest possible case because I, I don't think he's the strongest. The, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the question is: as of February twelfth, two thousand twelve, yeah. when we're taping this, yeah. In your view, yeah. is Mitt Romney the best shot? The Republicans have, under the circumstances, <laughs> to win the nominate to win the election in 2012, the general election, presidential election. Let me let me qualify that by saying, uh, people have there has been discussion about a brokered convention, a contested convention. That scenario, while still a, a long shot as we sit here today, probably you know 10, 15 percent tops, uh, because the system is sort of set up to prevent it. In that scenario, I think you could emerge with a Republican candidate that would be vastly superior to Mitt Romney. Or, quite frankly, I mean, part of the problem is- Who would is, that be? Who, who would that be? Could be Chris Christie, could be Jeb Bush, who it could be Mitch Daniels. Who do you think would be the best person to emerge out of a brokered convention for the Republicans to win? Hmm, I would say, I would have to say uh, Mitch Daniels, perhaps. Okay. Um, and why didn't with, Mitch run, in your view? Well, I mean, his family. I mean, his family asked not to. They did? Mm -hmm. His wife? His kids? kids. Mm -hmm. and why did his kids ask him not to? Well, he's not telling. I mean, that's, he's just, but that's what he said. Mitch has said, my family, my kids, not my wife. He's saying my kids asked Well, him I think his wife, his wife certainly, too. look, his when we reported in, in, in the book that we, uh, Carl Cannon and I are, are doing, it's a three-part uh, e-book series that's coming out. The second part's the gonna come out here. first part out came out already? First part came How out in November. Uh, go to Amazon.com and, and search for uh, Real Clear Politics or Tom Bevan. It's, and it's economically priced, isn't it? It is. It's two ninety nine. The best deal in town. Wasn't the best it dollar ninety nine at some point? Was that like if you bought it fresh or something? I, I think that's well. Initially, we turned in twice as many words as we were supposed to, so we decided it was worth a, an extra you buck. Pay yourself by the word. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, All right so but no, can, in that's our part one, and in our part reporting, coming out we one. went back. Uh, we're coming out with the second part here in a couple of months. Okay. So we're in the middle of, of doing interviews for that. But in our reporting on Mitch Daniels, uh, we went back and spoke to all the people who were there in the room with him when he first, you know, had his first legitimate meeting about running for president. And he, he told all of his group of eight closest confidants, look, my wife isn't, she's got veto power on this and, and she's probably never gonna go for it, but I'm willing to listen to what we have to say. Now, um, in Wait, the end, he, he also- said that to you? He said that to all of his closest confidants. Okay, that's what the closest confidants told you. That's right. You weren't in the room. Wasn't in the room. Okay, but we're, we were as close. Do you know as you who the be. closest confidants were? Sure, absolutely. Who are they? Eric Holcomb, who's the current uh, head of the Indiana Republican Party. Al Hubbard's one of his closest advisors. Charlie Black is a Republican strategist. Um, you know, a, a, a couple of others that have been longtime Mitch Daniels supporters. They all got together, and this was when he was seriously thinking about running for president back in January of, of 2010. In January 2010. Yeah. So he says he's willing to listen to him then in January 2010. That's right. And he listened to him, and then what happened? Well, he, over the course of, of you know the next five months or something, he he had a bunch of dinners and meetings and uh, with donors, with policy folks, and basically at the end of the day, Mitch Daniels was ready to run. I mean, he wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. He was giving off signals that he that he was going to do it. And uh, in fact, when he he told his this group of eight, the gang of eight, we called him. He said, uh, called for a conference call of all these guys, and half of them thought that he was going to announce it, tell them that he was going to run for president. And in fact, he told me opposite. And he said to his close confidence, or to you, the he said to the people who talked to you, That's right. or has he said this publicly that his family told him they Well, he's run. since said it publicly that one of the things, people thought it was all focused on his wife and, and, and his, his marriage, yeah, right. um, but he, he'd since given an interview after that and said, that uh, his daughter, one of his daughters, asked him not to run. Now, perhaps things have changed. And why, I mean, why, what's the reason why his daughter wouldn't want him to run? Well, I think what, what people will say, I mean, m much of the speculation was about his, his marriage. You know, he broke up, they got back together, it was a little bit messy. Um, you know, his line was that uh, if you like happy endings, you'll love our story. Well, mm -hmm. his, his marriage sort of, he had a happy ending, but the, the other couple that was part of that breakup, they didn't have a happy ending. So because that was his wife left him in Indiana to go where? To the West Coast? That's right, California. This was about 20 years ago or so. Uh, yeah, 17 so years ago. Something, something like that. 90s. Mm -hmm. 
and came back a couple she years went later. To, went to live and live with another man, mm -hmm. and that man left his wife, mm -hmm. and they lived together, but they didn't get married, right? That's I believe that's right. For yeah. three or four years. That's right. And then she had uh, an epiphany. His wife is Cherry. Is that her name? Sherry. Sherry. Mm -hmm. So Sherry had an epiphany and said she's going to go back and be with Mitch. Mm -hmm. But the, they've been together ever since. But the husband did not go back with his wife. That's right. For whatever reason. And and uh, Aaron McPike, who's one of our reporters, was only one of two reporters in the country to actually talk to that woman. Uh, we don't name What's her. her name? We, we don't, don't name, name her, her in the book. But uh -huh. uh, and you know she's still you know it wasn't a happy ending for her. Let's just she, leave it at she, that. She, she may, However, she may she may pull a, uh, a Gingrich's wife. She may come out and talk about what happened when Mitch I mean, decides to run as a brokered president. It's 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 theoretical. Candidate. But you talk to Daniel's folks. I mean, they said, look, we're not naive. We knew that story was out there. It was going to come out. We were ready to deal right. with it. What they said was, as the Daniels decided as a family to look at this, it's not a decision that you make that, that changes your life for a couple of years, it changes your life forever. I mean, you have Secret Service protection forever. Um, it is a life-altering decision, and they're very private people, and that's one well, of the reasons. Don't you think they're saying there may be more to come out than they would want? It's not that you're going to live with Secret Service. That, that can't be why a daughter's going to tell her father not to run for President of the United States, right? <laughs> I mean, Tom, you've got it's, kids, right? It's possible. Well, my kids are small, yeah. How, uh, they can't even. <laughs> boys and girls? Yeah. But someday, if you had a chance to run for President of the United States, hell, if you had a chance to be a major media mogul, do you think your kids would come up to you and don't do it because you know it's going to take away some of our private life? Do you Perhaps. think that could happen? You know your kids. They're not going to do that to you, Tom. I know them. These kids are solidly behind. No. <laughs> All right. So Mitch, Mitch might decide on a brokered convention, notwithstanding all that happened, he might take the... If people come to him and draft I, him, he might take it. I think if you and you think he would be the best guy to win. I for think the of those three that we mentioned, Chris Christie. Um, a lot of people say, and look, Chris Christie would be a formidable candidate. He's a close second in your mind. Yeah, I think Mitch. so. And, and Jeb then, Bush is a, is a close and, third. And, and absolutely. So, okay, so those. Are I think the three. any three of those would be Jeb Christie, or Mitch Daniels. Yeah, and I think any not Paul Ryan. I think Paul Ryan is probably a little too young to be thrust into that. Uh, Same thing with Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida. Yes. Isn't, he, isn't Marco Rubio where Barack Obama was when he started running for president in January of 2007? I mean, Marco Rubio, Barack Obama had been a U.S. senator for, at that time for two years. How mm -hmm. long has Marco Rubio been a U.S. senator for two, two years? years? So what's different? Why was Barack ready, but Marco Rubio isn't? Uh, well, first of all, Rubio wouldn't have run through the campaign, so I don't know that it's a, I know. B a bit it's almost, different. It's almost, almost better because then you, well, don't, I would also you say don't have to go through Rubio that. had more experience at this point than Obama did. I mean, he was Speaker of the Florida House. There, right. So. so in a sense, Rubio should be ready. And why aren't you? <laughs> to me, the best guy is Rubio. He brings you Florida for sure. He brings you a shot at a Hispanic vote across the country. And unless there are skeletons, and he's been probably vetted, he ran in, he ran in a tough race for Senate, didn't he, for the U.S. Senate? Uh, he did, but I mean, as we saw with okay. with a lot, there could be something. <laughs> but Rubio is not up there with you. You're saying it's look. Jeb, I think I think I think Jeb, Rubio is Mitch. on the top of everybody shortlist for vice president yeah, for exactly those reasons. But not for president. I wouldn't put him there okay. at this point. But um, now, what are the chances we're going to have a brokered convention? I think at this point, as we sit here today, it's it's you know ten fifteen percent. And and what that means is that Romney going forward and Santorum going forward and Gingrich and Paul split up the vote. So come the first ballot, nobody has a majority. That's right. In terms of delegates. Sean Trendy, who's our senior elections analyst, wrote a great piece uh, for us about this the other day that appeared on Rookler Politics. And what he did was, which and w w it was visually striking, he put a, a map of the, all the counties in the United States, okay, and filled in by county the winners of the Republican primaries thus far. And it was fascinating. I mean, you had Mitt Romney, who had you know, was blue, had blue up in New Hampshire, dominated, blue in central and southern Florida, blue in Nevada, mm -hmm. where he won handily, uh, all those counties. Gingrich was in red. Gingrich won every county in South Carolina, I think, uh, with a possible exception. Definitely the southern candidate. Yeah, exactly. And then you have Rick Santorum, who now, if you fill in, has Minnesota, Iowa, Colorado. I mean, you can Pretty just... Pretty broad base. Well, I mean, all, Gingrich is a, is a sort of southern candidate. Uh, Santorum is a, very much a Midwestern candidate and could be, you know, we'll see how he does in Michigan. We'll see how he does in, in a place right. like Ohio. Romney's very much a sort of Northeastern and Western. Uh, so you're mapping out a strategy, and maybe Sean did, in which this occurs. You get a brokered convention because you get three guys who are somewhat equal 
All, in, all regionally based with candidates, regional that's right? Candidates. That's right. Nobody who can pick up the national appeal. Nobody who can run the tables, so to speak. That's right. right. And yeah. it is, look, it's, it's. And Sean said that, you agree? I do, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think this is, well, you, 15, you, you talk to folks who, who, who've done this a lot longer. I've been yeah. doing this, you know, 15 years. You talk to folks who've been doing this a lot longer than I have, mm -hmm. 30, 40 years. Uh, Carl Cannon, our Washington editor, and his dad covered the, you know, Ronald, covered uh, Ronald Reagan for the Washington Post. Um, this is the, the, you know, he still thinks it's a long shot, but he said it's, it's for the first time in his lifetime, it's uh, a real possibility, whereas before it, it wasn't so much. And I, it, because I think you have, you have such flawed candidates, you have such, um, on the Republican side, everybody's got their own pieces of baggage that they're lugging These around. These guys are all pretenders to the throne. Would that be too strong? I mean, would anybody have thought about it if you said two or three years ago, New Gingrich is going to become the nominee of the Rick Republican Santorum, Party? Who's Rick a, Santorum. I mean, he lost his last Mid Senate Romney. race by 18 points, got absolutely run out of office. No, and, you'd say no, it would be Mitch Daniels. Absolutely. It would be Jeb Bush, even with the Bush name, probably better. It would absolutely. be, if not Bush or Daniels, it would be, who's our third guy? Who Chris Christie. Say? Chris Christie. Potentially. Former governor of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. No, current governor of New Jersey. That's right. Maybe Paul Ryan, maybe Marco Rubio, but surely not these three I mean, guys. you know, we, we looked. And, but this is what they're, I mean, and, and we forgot Ron Paul, of course. Well, not to mention who, who are the other ones who didn't run. Haley Barber, Mike right. Huckabee. But, I mean, they're Mike not, Huckabee. But, but they wouldn't be candidates. I mean, you could dismiss them out of hand. Do you think Mike Huckabee is national presidential material? I think if Mike Huckabee were running the Republican primary right now, he'd be killing it. I mean, he would be. Really? You, you see him playing well and like. Uh, well, first of all, you can make the argument that if, if Huckabee had gotten in when he had, that, that a guy like Gingrich may not have. Right. Um, and I think Huckabee. But still, he's a, I, he's a, I mean, Huckabee is, is a flawed candidate in a national election, don't you think? No, not necessarily at all. You don't think he's Absolutely too not. far right on the social conservative in, side? In, I mean, he's an Iowa candidate. He won Iowa. He's not going to win California. Maybe he'd win the primary in California. You don't, he's first of all, no Republican's going to win California. Okay. <laughs> he's not going to win. I don't win Indiana, but I don't know that he wins Colorado. You think he wins Colorado? I think it's possible. Absolutely. The general listen, election listen. in Colorado. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, go look at the he head, wins Pennsylvania. Go, Jeff. Go look at the head-to-head matchups right now. Okay, uh, in the general election, Rick Santorum is actually running better than uh, as well. And one poll actually had him ahead of Obama, but he's running almost as well. As Mitt Romney is, yeah, and you know Rick the reason that? And you know the reason? What do you think is the reason? I think this would surprise people, at least in my view. Why do you think Santorum is running better than Romney in an area where you think social conservatives may not have a lot of appeal? What was the state that you mentioned? Nationally, right? Nationally, Nationally. the general election. So how is it? And you know the answer. What's your answer to that? Well, I think that Obama. I, I think it has to do with Obama being a flawed candidate. Yeah, I think it has. What I think it has. A lot of people say, and the conventional wisdom is. To win the election, you have to focus on getting somebody who can win independence. And so Mitt Romney was thought to be a good national candidate because he'd win the Republicans and he'd win independence. I think the flaw in that analysis is that you need somebody to, to win independence, you have to win your base. It sounds odd. You have to energize the base. In other words, and if you don't energize the base, I mean, people saw this with John Kerry. He didn't win the election because he couldn't win independence. He won it because he couldn't energize the Democratic base. Right. Okay. Same thing with Mitt Romney. That is his problem. And, I, and since Santorum <laughs> energizes the base. Santorum energizes the base in a way that almost spills over. So a public independents who may not know some of the quotes that are more troublesome, they see this guy and he has appeal. Even the Republicans, who they disagree with, not even the Republicans, the Republicans like him. If you have a guy running for president who's not even liked by his own party, do you think if you're an independent, wouldn't you say, doesn't that raise red flags as why, to why you So have? Newt Gingrich doesn't energize the base? He does, he does more than Romney, but he can't get over the problem of you having a wife who comes out and says the things that they just said. I mean, really, it seems like Mrs. Gingrich, or wife number two, came out and did that interview, was put on at 60 Minutes, and wasn't it shortly after that Newt dropped like 20 points in the national polls? I mean, that's kind of a damning no, thing. No, 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 if your no, wife, no. If your wife no, comes no, out, no, no. if your ex-wife comes out and on 60 Minutes says, you know, he announced to me one day he wanted an open marriage. Tell me somebody else who has run for president of the United States and won with that kind of a baggage, Jeff, that kind of baggage. She came out on, on ABC News with Brian Ross that they were trying to decide when to air that debate. 
or air that air that clip. Okay. Yeah. It aired before Correction, the debate. Sixty minutes. Not That's right. Well, you know, John King asked him about it. He okay. smacked John King down. He ended up winning South Carolina. It's the only South Carolina. Yes, you win South Carolina, but you don't win Florida. That's the difference. You could he could he could he could but he, he could win, win the he country not win, win South Florida Carolina. because of his ex-wife's interview. That had nothing. I, no, to but do I'm with saying it. nationally, his nationally his appeal has dropped considerably, and people point to the fact that he just seemed to have a. He, I think this is well known. He seems to have a female gap, you know, whatever the word is, right? Well, he's doing considerably less well with females in various elections I'm just, now. I'm just arguing this. Uh, well, okay. When we were talking about I'm Santorum, saying, how Gingrich runs significantly Newt does worse. Energize, okay, new in the sense, we're going to talk about CPAC, and you've had your folks over there covering, yeah. we'll talk about that. But I watched that. I don't know if you did. I wasn't there. But when Newt spoke, he really did energize that base. He, he absolutely when did. When Mitt spoke, I mean, I heard the mainstream media say, oh, they were surprised how well he did. I don't know what they were watching. I was watching people go like this. <laughs> when Gingrich spoke, it was, you know, it was hardcore cheering. Right. So he energizes the base, but I'm saying he's, I think he's got this real problem with women because it's, a lot of women don't like, don't do a lot of women, notwithstanding what they tolerated with Bill Clinton, you know, Newt doesn't have the appeal with women to overcome the baggage that he creates with women, if that makes any sense. Bill Clinton was loved by women, even women who knew what the hell he had been doing, even though they knew and understood he was a womanizer. There was something, he had a magnetism to him. Newt doesn't have that. I, look, I agree. Okay. I'm not sure that, I'm not My sure that is, that explains why Rick Santorum is running even or ahead of Obama and, and as well as Romney in the general election. I mean, I think Santorum but it's is... But damning it's damning with faint praise to say you're doing as well as Romney. It's surprising, I understand, for the reasons we've led to leave, but still, doing as well as Romney is not going to do it in terms of being able to win the presidential well, election. Well, this is Romney's problem. I mean, Romney was running for a long time on the issue of electability. Once that's stripped away from him, there's really... That, that's a... There's not a whole lot left in terms of rationale there. for, There's no for there voting there. for him. There's no core there. That's right. Well, I mean, you, the, core, again, the you, rationale for his candidacy. But Tom, again, you not what you think people say. Having watched, yeah. having watched uh, Mitt Romney for now six years or so running for president of the United States, would you say it's true? You don't know what the core is. If there is a core, you don't know what the core is for Mitt Romney. You, Tom Bevan. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, look, I think a lot of people don't. And, and uh, it could be that he's really conservative and he just doesn't talk that way because he doesn't want to be too conservative and he didn't think that would be helpful. It could be that he realized if he was going to be governor of Massachusetts, he would have to be moderate and then go right. Why he chose to run and want to be governor of Massachusetts, I'm not sure. I mean, but so it could be lots of reasons. <laughs> but I'm just saying you, like me, like anybody who's ever even met the guy and spent a few mi minutes with him, you don't walk away knowing who the guy is. And, and it's possible he doesn't, there is nothing there. That is, he will be whatever he needs to be to get where he wants to go. That's a distinct possibility, right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. that's, you that's know, why, why would he choose to run against Ted Kennedy? And I mean, okay. to your point, so, I think he's, he's. So, so stepping back, we've got, we've got 85% chance probably, well, 15% chance of a brokered convention for the Republicans. And what's the breakdown between, what's the chance that Romney wins the nomination? 85 or less? In other words, does Santorum no, 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 no. have a chance? I think, I think less. Some chance to I mean, win? this is, you know, to watch the conventional wisdom shift, I mean, after floor is like, oh, it's, it's Romney's. So you think Santorum could win? What's, what's, what do you, I, give me an odds, give me a probability I, it's for Santorum. Pro look, winning. I think Romney's probably still the, the favorite to win this purely because Santorum and Gingrich, neither one of them have the money or the organization. They're going to get sort of ground up right. here as this, con but it is going to go. The contest is right. going to go long, potentially into okay. June, where California is. But so, 15% chance that it's a brokered convention. What's the chance that Romney has of winning the nomination? 60%. Probably 60, and 65. And that leaves you so so leaves you about 10% each for Gingrich or Santorum. Pro that's probably about right. Okay. And that's where we sit. So we've kind of, folks, that's the end of the show. No, just about. <laughs> but see, this this is actually, but seriously, this is what you can find out when you go to RealClearPolitics.com. Because what you're saying is most of what we've been talking about has been covered there, has been written about, and people can find it, Real Clear Politics. If they need some specialized focus, they can go to Real Clear Technology, right? That's right. We've got a series of websites, markets, markets Real Clear sports, religion. technology. How many do you have? Total? Ten. Ten. Yeah. Okay. History, books, energy, science. So. And all on the same theme of taking the best that's out there that's right. and putting it down, plus adding original content. Because now, what, roughly 30% of what you put out in real clear politics is not picking things that are out there, but it's new. 
is coming from. That's right. We've got a at real clear politics. We've got two full time reporters who've been out chronicling all of the stuff that's been going on in the Republican nomination. Uh, we've got a White House correspondent. We've got Sean Trendy, who I mentioned earlier, who's our senior elections analyst. Carl Cannon, who's a fabulous journalist, who's our, our uh, Washington You've got street bureau. credibility because people, you want to be balanced and your view is balanced. You find stuff in that, in that presentation of the best things to read. You find the New Republic. You find National Review. That's right. You find left and right. You find everything in between. That's Would right. Would you say you're, you, are you the white line down the middle of the road? People suggest and think that, and I don't know John McIntyre, your colleague, your co-founder, mm -hmm. But I know you, Tom, and Tom, it strikes me you're, you're pretty fair, but you may lean a little right, right of center. Would that be fair? Uh, you know, look, part of this, these discussions, which I've learned over the last 12 years, is it's, it's subjective and it depends on where the question is coming from. We get emails all the time saying, you guys are, are you know, so conservative, and we get emails all the time saying, you guys are so liberal, I can't believe you run E.J. Dionne from the Washington Post. How could you do that? No, so, no, but I, I understand that, and I'm not saying that because I don't, as I said, you're pretty... The, the, the entity, realclearpolitics.com, yeah. is clearly pretty centrist in mm -hmm. terms of how you present things yeah. and the divergent views. But I'm just asking about Tom Bevan, because you're one of the co-founders, and maybe that's more important than just another guy at Real Clear Politics, right. is you have some control over that. And I'm just saying, just between us, Tom. Just between say, us. You're sort of right of center? I would say I am... Uh, no, I think I'm... Center right? I, I would I mean, say I would consider myself a, a, a centrist. Um, Who's really? Here's the here's the Do distinction. You lean a little here's bit the more distinction, right though. Than here's left, the distinction. I'm not trying to say I'm not. Boss. I'm not an ideologue. Like I'm not. I don't don't care a lot about ideological fights. I like politics for the sport of it. I really do. Um, and not, I don't. I don't approach it with any sort of particular axe to grind from a you know, like in the presidential race. I don't have a, any sort of horse that I'm riding uh, or any team that I'm playing for. And that's uh, personally, but also like site wide. Potentially, I mean, depending on who it is, sure. You can vote third party. I mean, I can vote third party. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can vote for I would we're gonna get in we are gonna continue to speak so Well I mean we we started it was it was it was two guys and an idea. Two guys and an idea. That's right. Look, I'm a public school kid from Washington State, by the way, so take that from the state. So you're just right. a guy. Just a guy. But you got a lot of stuff. Well, you know what? The thing about it was when we started. What is it? What is it? I was in advertising. How did you succeed here? What is it that enabled you and John to succeed? If you had to think of one or two traits, clearly to success, what is it that enabled you? Well, I think, we identified, a, a, a that that, that, um, I think we identified a space in the market that was emerging that that you know was was available to us. I mean, there were political junk people. A lot of political junkies out there, and there was no site that was sort of catering to their needs in terms of, you know, people who read the op-ed pages first, who watch Sunday shows, who listen to talk radio, and, people and who follow balance. elections, and people who won't balance. You're an anomaly right. because MSNBC says they want people who are, our audience is far left. People might say Fox is we want people who are far right, and then the others who you're the one entity I know who seems to be we want to get people that they want. And the, the one caveat to that is that regardless of whether it's from the left or from the right or from wherever, our sort of DNA is because of John's background as a trader, my background as an advertiser, was in advertising. We're not politicians, we're not journalists, so it's an outside the beltway perspective. Don't you generally believe in the free market? Sure, but I mean... Doesn't that push you over to the right? <laughs> believing in the free... Also. Yeah, you think people on the left are as likely to believe in the free market as people on the right? I don't think that that necessarily makes me a radical right-winger if no, I... No, I didn't say you're radical, but doesn't that push you... That's why I said you're center-right. I never said you're a radical. And I don't even know, but I'm saying a case could be made that you're center-right because you believe in the free market. Because the people on the left tend not to believe in the free market. Am I right on that? Look, even I the think left, that's even people who are center left tend to not to believe in the free market. That's that's that Am may right be a bit of an overgeneralization. Yeah. Look, I, going back to the point, you know, 
I think our calling card and one of the reasons that we've been successful is because the way we approach politics is from an outside the beltway perspective. There's a lot of conventional wisdom that goes on, a lot of sort of bubble thinking that goes on. People are thinking the same things, writing the same things. And we make an effort to, to find not only pieces would represent what, what Washington is thinking, but what other people are thinking. Because quite honestly, a lot of times the perspective out here in the heartland uh, so is, 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 is- comes from Washington, doesn't it? I mean, you, oh. don't, you don't say the Oregon Review here. I mean, it's, it's stuff that is being-